Hey guys, thanks for tuning in to my first video. This is a teddy bear cake topper, as well as a teddy bear that is going to be climbing up the side of the cake. So what you're going to need is your fondant in whichever color you would like. I'm using a taupey tan color, and this is 60% satin ice fondant and 40% satin ice gum paste. And you're just going to want to knead your fondant to get it um, very soft and pliable. And so I'm starting with the teddy bear that's going to be on top of the cake. So this teddy bear is going to be more three-dimensional than the one that's going to be climbing up the cake. And I have a six-inch cake dummy, which I'm going to use to set the bear on. This will help you see how big the bear is going to be on top of the cake as well it's just a safe place to build the topper for the body you want it to be a bit of an egg shape a little bit fatter than a standard egg but skinnier at the top and fatter at the bottom And for the head, you're just going to do the same thing. You're going to knead the fondant and roll it into the shape you want, um, going for more of a rounder head. But if you wanted to do an oval, you could do that too. Pressing the fondant onto your sill pat will help keep any ridges or seams away. And you want to hold the head up to the body and make sure it's an appropriate size, but you don't want to put the head on the body just yet. So set it to the side. And next you're going to want to work on the legs. I like to make both the legs at the same time. It just helps keep them even. And you're going to take your fingers and pinch in the bottom of the body just to make little grooves for where the legs will be. This helps the legs not stick out and be bulky. It keeps them more flush to the body. Okay, and then once you have the legs on, you just want to set that back on your styrofoam. And um, you can see the head there is just off to the side. And this is optional if you want to add a little tail to the back of the teddy bear. And so for the arms, we're going to basically do the same thing as the legs. We're going to roll out a rope and then split it into two. I like to flatten the paws a little bit on the sill pad. I think it just adds a cute little touch.
Okay, and then you just want to work on the positioning of your arms. Um, so depending on if your bear is going to be holding anything or, um, you know, you could have its paws up to its mouth. So you just want to know where you're going to position them before you glue them down. And what I'm doing here is I'm just trimming away the thickness of the back portion of the arms. This helps the arms sit flush. Um, so when we put the legs on, we thinned out the body. But if you can't, you can't really do that for the top portion of bears or else um, it doesn't look like the bear will have shoulders. So instead, you're going to trim the arms to thin them out so that they're not as bulky. You want to leave the paws completely um, three-dimensional, though. You don't want to trim away from the paws, just from the back portion of the arms. And then you want to use edible glue. So what I'm using is piping gel. If you don't have that, you could just take some fondant and a little bit of water to melt the fondant into a tacky glue. Okay, so now I'm going to work on the face and using a silicone sculpting tool, I'm just going to make a line down the teddy bear's face and down the body. This will just give the illusion of a seam, which is like a really cute detail for a stuffed animal. And I'm just doing the same thing to the body off camera. Using the back of a paintbrush, I'm just going to um, decide where I want to put the eyes. This will help me know where I am going to put the nose. nose you want to be a lighter shade of the body color. You're also going to use this shade for the inside of the ears.
Okay, so just attaching the nose, you want to roll a ball and then flatten it out. You still want it to be a bit three-dimensional. Uh, as you can see here, so it's like a half sphere. Using the back of my tool, just making an indentation for where I'm going to put the nose. And here I'm just attempting to fix a bit of a flaw on the top of the head. Okay, so for the ears, you want to roll two circles that are identical in the brown color, and then you're going to take the same color you used for the snout and roll two smaller circles, and then you're going to tap those onto the brown circles. And then using your finger or a ball tool, you are going to push the lighter color centers into the darker color outside. So you can see what I'm doing here, and that pushes the lighter color inside the darker color, um, giving it the illusion that the darker color is on top of the lighter color, even though it was vice versa. And then you're just going to cut the bottoms flat so it sits flush to the bear's head. And you want to use the piping gel to secure them. You can always put more piping gel, so start with a bit less. When I put the ears on, I put a little bit too much piping gel, so I had to correct and wipe some of that away. I love when it's time to put the ears on. I think it just brings the whole thing to life. And now using a black or a brown fondant, you want to get ready to make the eyes and the nose. And so you're just going to take very little tiny bits and roll them around 
Um, for the eyes, you can just put them on how it is now, and the eyes will be popping off and be more three-dimensional, which is what I like for a teddy bear. But if you were doing a more realistic bear and you wanted the eyes to be more flush, you could just use the back of your tool or a small ball tool and make um, indentations where you want to insert the eyes into the head. And for the nose, you want to just make it a bit of like a triangle shape, or you can leave it round and it'll be more of a button nose, whatever you like. For the mouth, I'm just using an edible food marker to draw on the two lines for the mouth. You just want to do this very lightly. You don't want the mouth to be too dark. And if you mess up, it's okay. Just take the nose off and make a new one. Okay, so using a toothpick, you are just going to secure the body to the styrofoam and then leave some sticking out to secure the head to the body. You're not going to secure the head to the body yet, though. You want to let the body dry as long as you can before you place the head on so that you don't have the weight of the head pushing the body downward. And next, we're going to get started on the bear that's going to be climbing up the side of the cake. Um, so this bear is going to be less three-dimensional because we don't want it to be so heavy on the cake. And we're going to make it laying down, and then when it's dry, it could be stood up to be climbing up the cake. Working on the body, we're essentially going to make it the same shape. We're just going to be working in the laying down position. So I have pinched the bottom to help where the legs are going to go. And just using some cornstarch on a board so that the fondant doesn't stick to the board when I move the fondant topper over there. And inserting a toothpick into the body to help hold the head on.
So as you can see, I've just been repeating the steps of the first bear, but in the position of a lying down bear that looks like it's crawling upwards when it's placed on the cake. If you have any questions about either of the bears I did, you can leave a comment and I can definitely reply to you. I tried not to talk through the whole thing, but if you think that more talking in more direction would be more helpful, let me know in the comments.